Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello. Welcome to the video for what is timeline the playback properties. So this video is going to consist of basically all of the properties, inputs, nodes, things that cover the timeline playback, things that alter the playback rate or the playback speed or the playback direction on a timeline. So let's jump right into this. For the most part, these are our basic playback properties on the left side. We have play, play from start, stop, reverse, reverse from end, set new time, which is coupled into the node below it called new time. And then we have our outputs, which is update, finished, which direction we're running, and then whatever actual curve output we have. So if we were to plug in play with our T here, and we'll go ahead and hit play, compile and save, and hit play, and I hit T, you'll notice the item glows and then stops glowing. We are running our timeline over five seconds, and that's our output value. Now I'm gonna go ahead and adjust this down to two seconds to make it easier, for example. So then I can change this value to 0.1, uh, and then I can change this value to two. So I just basically adjusted our timeline down to two seconds instead of five, so it'll run quicker. <clears throat> now, for our inputs, we have play. Play will basically fire off. It will start at whatever our current position is at, and it will continue along the entire till the end. Once it gets to the end, it's done. So if we were to tell this one to play, it's going to pulse and stop. Now it's done. If I hit play again, technically it's happening. If you look in the top left corner, we can see the value of 2. We can see the value of 2 because my finished node is firing and telling me how long it was. But you notice we didn't see the colors. Well, that's because basically we're at the end because we told it to play and we're finishing instantly. If you want something to repeat or basically always play the entire thing, we have our play from start node. So in this case, if we hit play, it's going to play from start and then it's going to play from start again. And every time you hit T, it will play from start. Now here's something to note. If you fire off the play from start in the middle, like if you notice I'm waiting roughly a second, it's going to fire it off again every time and it's never going to finish. You're basically going to interrupt where the timeline currently is and tell it to play from start again. Stop is pretty simple. We're going to hook up stop to the Y node and we're going to hook T back up to play. So now when I, let me compile and save and I run this, my T will start it, the entire thing. And if I run it again and this time stop it, the Y key tells the timeline to stop where it currently is and that's it. It stops. Now you notice when I press the Y key, we're not getting a value in the top left. The timeline never finished. Even though we're stopped, the timeline never reached the end, therefore it doesn't count as finished. It's just basically, you could think of it as paused, but nothing's really running. It just basically says, hey, at this time, this is your current time, no longer do anything else. Now if we were to hit T for play, you'll notice it will fade out and then it will finish. And it's going to start again from our current time. Because stop basically says, hey, wherever you're at, stop. Make sure you keep track of where you are, but don't do anything else. Just stop. And play always says, hey, just go ahead and play from wherever you're at. Now we have reverse. I'm going to hook up reverse to Y. And I'm going to go ahead and hook up play on T. And we'll run this. T plays, Y reverses. And you'll notice something here. If we look in the top left, we have a value. Now the value is not firing. That finished node, the finished node, finished wire, doesn't fire when it gets to the end of the timeline. So two seconds in. It fires when our timeline finishes. So when I hit the T key, we're going from the beginning to the end. And then when I hit the Y key, we're going from the end to the beginning because we're telling it to reverse. Now keep in mind, the reverse and play nodes go from the current time frame. So if you'll notice, I'm reversing from the middle of it. So technically, if I do it fast enough, we could never see a finish. 
but you will see it basically going up and down as I'm juggling basically between half a second and one second. Your finish note always fires when this finishes playing, whether it's forward to end or end to forward. Once it hits, once it is finished playing, it's going to fire off the finish note. Reverse from end should be pretty simple. It is the opposite of play from start, and it's basically going to go to the end no matter what and play back to the beginning. So the Y key is going to go to the end and play, and this one's going to go to the beginning, and you just basically, you could see it technically pulse back and forth. So playing from the start no matter what, basically rewind to zero and go. This one's rewind to whatever our duration is and go backwards. Now our set new time, let me go ahead and hook this up to our U and move this up here. This basically sets a new time on the timeline and tells it to go into effect then. Basically, hey, this is your new time and that's it. Now, if you were to set the new time from the beginning, let's say you haven't told it to play. You just said, hey, I want you to set your new time to 0.5. So let's say, for example, we go ahead and tell it 0.5. And then we tell it to play. It's going to go ahead and play from 0.5. Now, this is not going to work with what I'm doing right here. Let me show you. I'll hit the U key and set the time to 0.5. You'll notice it's now set to an emissive. Then I'll hit the T key to play from start, and it's going to go back to gray, the, the darker color, not the emissive. So that's something to keep in mind. All this does is change the time, and it says, hey, Set your current time here and update yourself. Play from start, remember, when it tells it to play from start, it goes back to the beginning. So if you're going to set the time, you probably don't want to play from start after that. It would be more along the lines of set your time and then play. So in this example, I could tell it to U, set the time to 0.5, and T, play from 0.5 to the end. And I could go back and tell it to continue every time. Now every time I hit U, it's going to go ahead and set the time. You'll notice it's trying to fade out. It's trying to fade out because my timeline is still playing. I told my timeline to play. The timeline's not going to stop trying to play until it gets to the end. But every time it gets near that two second mark, I'm telling it to reset its time to 0.5 and it's basically continuing indefinitely. So this takes effect immediately when you have a node plugged into the execute wire. Keep in mind just because you tell it new time 0.5 doesn't mean it's going to change it you have to execute the set new time node and it takes this value as the new time. Now for our outputs, it's pretty simple. We have our update. Every time this timeline fires, every time it's playing and it gets a new value for its tick, forward, backwards, whatever we tell it to do, the update node is going to fire and whatever we tell it to do is going to happen. Remember, every time the update node fires, we're going to have new value from any of our outputs. Finish is fairly simple. I've showed it to you a couple times. Whenever our timeline finishes, doesn't matter the direction, but when it's done, it's going to fire off the finish node and whatever we want to happen will happen. And in this case, I'm just telling it to print out the length of our timeline. The set play rate and set new time nodes are two nodes that can be ran at any point and adjust how the timeline is running. Our set play rate is basically a multiplier telling us how fast our timeline is going to run. So in this case, I'm going to hook it up to our T. I'm going to play from start, and I'm going to have it a value of 1. So when we run this, uh, whoops, let's go ahead and save this. Well, we're going to see an issue. The issue is we don't have a target. This goes back to, again, the timeline when we create it creates an automatic component variable over here for the timeline. So we have to tell it which timeline we want to actually set our play rate on. Now that I have that playback example, playback examples is the name, playback example, the component, and I hooked it up to our target, now we have no error. We'll hit play, we'll hit T, and it's going to play back normally. The play rate we tell it to play back at is 1, so of course it's going to be normal. If we tell it to do a play rate of 2, and we hit play, we hit T, it's going to be running at basically two times speed. This is a multiplier against a base of one. So two times the rate. 
five would be five times the rate. You notice it's really fast. You also notice 2.0 is at the top left. Our timeline is two seconds. When I get the length of the timeline, it's two seconds. We're just playing it back five times faster. 0.5 will have the desired result of doubling the playback duration. We're telling it to play back at half speed, basically. So our two times timeline will now play back over four seconds. But again, it is still a two second duration. So all this does is change the rate at which it plays back. It does not alter this value for the length at all. The last one we have is going to be our set new time node. Basically, this is a node that is these two right here. This one is part of the input. Basically, if we want to trigger it off of an event, we could do a set new time with a value here. If we want to trigger it as part of a node, we have our set new time node with our input time. We, of course, need a target. So I'll plug in our playback examples target here. And this is basically going to tell it to set the new time to 1.5. If we were to hook this up to play, and we go ahead and tell it to run, we're going to watch it run, come down, and then immediately go back to an emissive. Once it finishes, it's firing off the set new time, and it's changing the time to 1.5. Now, this is technically a way you, that is technically a way you could try to kind of get it to loop automatically by continually by telling it to set the new time and then play again. Now keep in mind each of these nodes, if we were to, for example, do play or reverse, reverse from end, play from start, they're all going to have a node that can be used to activate any of these inputs. So in theory, if we were to do this, for example, not play from start, let's do a play. This is a way you could basically fake a loop like this. Te actually, technically, if you were to do, um, just do, eh, we don't, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna set this up just so you can see the set new time running and then we'll do a play right here. And we'll plug this in and we'll go ahead and play this. Keep in mind, we're only hitting the T key once to play this once. We'll hit play, we'll hit T. And you'll notice it now, we'll basically continue forever and the top left corner shows us two because we are hitting our finish on the end of the timeline what we're doing is basically finishing setting our new time to half a second in and then telling it to play again of course it's going to basically play from where we're at half a second go to the end finish and repeat indefinitely so that's a way you could technically have a loop set up without using one of the properties inside the timeline but just so you keep for reference, all of your timeline, it's under component, timeline. All of your individual inputs have nodes that are associated with them. Play, play from start, reverse, reverse from end, and of course are set the time right here, new time, which is here and here. Now our direction is our final output. This one's pretty simple. Basically it's an enumerator. If we were to, for example, go to, um, equal to, we'll do equal, we'll do equal enum, we're going to get two values, it's really simple. Is it playing forward or is it playing backwards? That's it. That's literally all it does. It'll tell us if we're playing forward or backwards. So you can use that for reference and it'll give you back basically if it's forward or backwards. That's it. That's going to wrap up our playback properties for the timeline. Playback information such as the um, Properties and such are covered in a different video, but this is basically the properties that you can use when you are playing back your timeline. It gives you the ability to adjust the rate at which it's playing, gives the ability to adjust if it's playing from the start or from the current position, allows you to reverse it, stop it, change a new time, and then allows you to do something based on when it updates and finishes. You have the ability again to set any of these individual nodes with associated helper nodes. And it's useful if you need to adjust something at runtime based on player interaction. Maybe you're playing back a loop or a pulse or something like that, and then the player destroys it, or you want it to adjust itself over time. Maybe you have a pulse, and that pulse is set to one second. 
and it just simply flashes to indicate a warning. But as the player starts slowly running out of time, you might want to adjust the play rate slowly a little bit faster, and then our pulse, without having to do anything to the curve or anything, our pulse now starts going faster and faster because our timeline is playing back basically faster speed. And that's it. That's going to wrap up our playback properties for our timelines.